<laughs> so I found that on Facebook. <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> and I forget whose feed I saw it on, so forgive me for that. Please forgive me for that. But I know, look at that. What are they, all featherweights or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So where's all my notes? Ah. Um, good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, October 19th, and we are going to complete our baskets today, okay? But first, I'm going to tell you a little story and show you something really neat. Uh, there was a yard sale around the corner from my house, and I said, wow, do you have any um, linens? And... She had some, but they weren't what they weren't what I was looking for, you know. And um, she said, "I have some more. I'm gonna I'm gonna put them out um, next weekend." Well, the next weekend was Diana McClendon's uh, David's thing, so I drove by, just looked real quick, and then had to jam on. But in the meantime, I got invited into her house. Literally, she's probably eight or nine houses away, and she's moving away. She's moving, so so much for that. But anyways. She showed, she wanted to show me her fireplace and I just, it, there's like white buildings on both sides and I just kind of almost had a heart attack when I saw this. It's by Heath. Heath Pottery has been around forever and ever and ever and is a Bay Area thing and it is not cheap, let's just say. It is not because each one is hand created. But anyways, um, I took a picture of it. And then, and then how did it play out? So then she came over yesterday. I was at an R and K Zoom deal and there was a knock on the door. John went and got it and she brought me a box of all the leftover Heath tile. And it's exactly what I was looking for when I do my kitchen next year. So I can like lean it up against the cupboards to see what I think. I want something that's classic and that will stand the test of time. And I just think that Heath is just, beautiful. Google it. And it's also in the color I love. But anyways, um, she then left and she said, I have some linen. I got those linens. She said, they're by the front door and they're trying to clean out. They got to be out by Monday and they're renting and where they're going, they're renting. And, but she's got to come back here and still works like two and a half years to retirement. And I, I said, well, where are you going to stay? And she said, well, we have a trailer beside our house. And so, okay. So anyways, uh, I go over yesterday afternoon. I got to show you a couple fun things. And I said, I now I want to see your, tra your trailer. And so I'm pretty sure it was an Airstream from the 60s. I walked in and it was just this gorgeous wood everywhere. It is the original old refrigerator, original old stove. And I just... Uh, I, Okay, so now I'm probably the weirdo because I'm in there just rubbing everything, just touching the wood and feeling it. And it took me back to my childhood when my dad had a wood boat. So it was just so nostalgic. And I kind of ran a little late this morning because I was on my computer Googling the kind of boat that I thought my dad had back in the day. It was wooden. I see a wooden boat and I go out of my flipping mind. But anyways, I want to show you two pieces of linen that she sent. Uh, there's a, that were that was in the stack, and let's see. Okay, this is fascinating to me. At first, I thought it was a little piece of fabric, and then I got in there and started picking at it, and actually, that's all embroidery. So what the maker did, I'm sure, was just outlined the letter and then filled it in with these little um, just French knots and little just stitches. I mean, that's it. I, I just, I couldn't believe it, okay? But the other thing is, I and I'm not anymore, I'm not anymore, so I'm not putting out the siren call. Um, I, I, for a while I had a serious collection of donkeys and um, known, known by me, another name, J-A-C-K-A-S-S. -S. <laughs> and there were some of those in here. I couldn't believe it. 
I couldn't believe it. A senorita bringing her burrow in. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I just felt ever so, ever so grateful that I have a new friend that's moving away. <laughs> But thank you so much. I so appreciate it. Okay, you sent me some pictures. Also, before we're going to do the base of the um, block, but I'm also going to show you some more Roberta quilts from PIQF that people made. And, and a, a really great question came across that John shared with me, and I'm going to show you a couple things here. Okay, so Joyce made this little pillow by just... Um, stitching together the fabrics curvy and then slicing it across. Super fun. All right. And then Margaret um, did the swishy waves in the back and then did the squares on top applique. And I can't, I couldn't really tell Margaret if they were, I'm not, I'm not even sure she's on today, if those were raw edge or finished. But I have been known to piece a top and then applique things like those squares on top of it. That's completely doable. And I do it finished, all right, using Rosa Roja's technique. Okay, then we have, oh, Anne, 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 Anne. She scored herself some ribbons with this. I, I got to tell you, when we go, it, there was one of these at PIQF. Um, when I go to these shows and I see these quilts, it just makes my heart sing. So, Anne, thank you for sending that photo and congratulations on your ribbons. Okay, going back to the late Roberta Horton, I showed some of the quilts last week and I saw in the comments one of you said, can you please show some more quilts? So, okay, here we go. Here's Anita Grossman Solomon. She's out of New York. And we've done a show with her. That's what's really fun is a lot of these things we've done shows with people before. Um, and it's so interesting. Okay, so in case you didn't see the other um, installation that I shared last week, I believe, Mary and Roberta, Mary and Roberta are twin sisters. And Roberta passed suddenly in my book because nobody knew she was sick. And so Mary sent out some of plaid, uh, Roberta's plaids and stripes that you could incorporate into a piece. And it was for PIQF. And the only rule was that it could only be so wide. It was something like 32 or 33 inches. But the length could be whatever you want. So, And you could use whatever you wanted of your own stuff, too. So this is Ann Rohde's. And Ann is a member of EBHQ. I think that's really interesting how she did that. There's those crazy little sticks in there in a very formal setting. And this one actually has a ton of Roberta's plaids and stripes in it. An absolute ton. Mine didn't. Mine was maybe 10%. Okay, then this is Becky Keck. And I don't know if this is Becky Keck with Bernina or another Becky Keck. But look at the quilting on this. It's just, it's just beautiful. I'll tell you, Nobody rushed through it like it wasn't important. Everybody took their time and did it right. Okay, this is George Taylor's. He, he's up in Alaska. Oh my gosh, I just noticed this. Uh, where the bars cross, there's like a little broken dishes in each corner. That's pretty cool, George. And then this is Jacqueline's. And Jacqueline, oh shoot. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. That's why I needed my paper here. I didn't put your last name in my notes. But that's a picture of her and Roberta. I think they're holding hands. And then look at all the little people on the top and the bottom. It was really a very moving exhibit. Okay, this is Karen Dugas. Uh, Baskets for Roberta, I think it was called. And then how she put some stars in there. Roberta's work was... It was traditional for sure, but I think this is a fine representation because it was also avant-garde, especially for the time. Oh, Liz Analoski, she uh, did a bunch of slow stitching, big stitching on it. Liz ha was my editor-in-chief for every single book of mine. She's been with C&T forever and ever. 
and she's relocated to go up to Tahoe where her kids are, she and her husband, and she just retired. She just retired. She's one of the long haulers at CNT. And man, if you had Liz as your person, you were super lucky. Okay, then this is Liza Pryor Lucy. Liza works with CAFE. And what I thought was so amazing with this was that this was all hand done, guys, all hand done. And you know, those don't come together in 30 seconds, right? And then this is Lynn Coolish. She's been on the show. I love this. It's so, it's so modern. It, you guys can do this. Uh, if you look at how Lynn has placed the lights and the darks, your eye travels all over it. Okay, and then this is Sean, Sean Dubin. This was really a, a long piece, a super long piece. And there's Roberta. And then Robbie Joy Eklow. This is so her style. This just absolutely made me smile. I wouldn't even have to look at the name tag to know it was Robbie Joy's. Although for Robbie Joy, this is pretty knocked back for color. Her stuff is pretty amazing. You know, if I say names and you don't know how many, um, and you don't know who they are, write them down and Google them, okay? And then last but not least is Ricky Timms. And so here is his. I mean, I, I, would, I would know that's Ricky's too. I would know that's Ricky's by the avant-garde nature of it and the wonky piecing, and I, I feel like that sunflower is kind of a signature of his too. So how many books have I written? I've, they tell me it's C&T over 30. I don't believe it, but that's what they say. <laughs> and um, how many quilts have I made? Ballpark? 400, maybe? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. No idea. Okay. One of the questions, let me get my stuff over here. Aish. Okay. One of the questions that came in was how big, I'm going to get my pattern here. How big should these measure finished, all right? And I thought, okay, so let's just look at the pattern here. I know I had to cut at three and a quarter, and then I know I have to subtract seven eighths because they're half square triangles, and seven eighths is the magic number, okay? So I, John was cooking breakfast, and I said, hey, John, what is three and a quarter minus seven eighths? I don't, even, I don't even know how to put this in the stupid calculator. And then I remembered how I did it in the olden days. All right. So let's take a look at this little ruler. And I need a pointer thing. Where are you, pointer thing? I have a Bernina 765. It's mid-range. Okay. So I'm going to I cut it at three and a quarter. So I've got one, two, three. Okay, so this is a three and a half inch ruler, but here's your three and a quarter, okay? Now, if I wanna know, because I know the magic number is seven eighths, what I'm gonna do, because this is eight of eight here, right? I'm gonna go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Finished, it should measure two and three eighths. I, I didn't do math, I just counted. And that's how I've done it forever and ever and ever, amen. Because math is not my friend. So I just count using my ruler and understanding that there are eight components to an inch when you're doing um, quilting. And everything's like, you know, an eighth, a quarter, three eighths, a half, five eighths, three quarters, and seven eighths. And so if you just get that in your brain, then you're A-OK -okay and you can just count away on your ruler. All right? Okay. So you people were more than kind <laughs> with my faux pas, faux pas on Monday. 
I don't know what in the heck happened, but let's talk about, let me, eh, let me get this in frame here. There we go. Eh. Okay. So this is what we've sewn so far, correct? And this is, I will actually, I think next Monday, I'll talk about sewing that down. Got something cool on Friday for you. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to sew on these base triangles to the white. This is a case of when weirdo shapes don't line up. As soon as you start combining triangles and squares and odd shaped units, you're going to have things that hang over. You just are. And it's interesting, you, you start to learn what you should be looking for. And in this case, if, if let's just say this happened to exactly fit, you think, oh, yay, or okay, I'll just do this. No, I know I need about this much hanging over. And if it's not, either this is cut wrong or this is cut wrong. Stop, okay? So the other thing is many times when we go to our sewing machine, we just chain, 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 chain. This is important, super important, okay? When you lead into your sewing machine, I'm gonna pretend like, I am gonna sew these people, but this one is gonna go this way. And remember to check on, and I'm gonna sew right there. Remember to check on both sides. I hadn't checked on both sides yes uh the other day I would have been in trouble. And then this one actually I've got to do it this way because I'm going to actually pick these up and sew. This one goes this way. And this one goes this way. They go opposites of each other. If you don't do this, I guess you'd call it a mirror image, you're going to end up with a bunch of stands that are on one side only one side so just this is super important people and and it's one of those things that's like well no kidding but you only have to do it 10 times to have it really resonate okay so let me sew this and also i got a nice letter about teaching about what how to avoid biases when you are pressing what I negated to say is also when you're pressing, you want a firm surface. You don't want something squishy when you're pressing seams because that alone can also help stretch the bias. All right. Okay. So let me use my thread cutter. All right. Let's go back to here. And see what we've got. Okay. Yay. All right. I'm going to cut this apart. I can see a little bit of white in there. That's not, I mean, it's not going to kill you, but it's not good. Okay. Now, when I go to press it, I suppose I could set the seams, but it, now I've got bias here and here. All right. Your inclination would be to press this way because you're pressing to the dark. Don't do that. Press the other way. It's, it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel super counterintuitive, but press towards the white, and there's a reason for it. So let me press from the top side. Going to avoid this bias right here. I'll bet you can hear the steam. Probably not a great idea because of all these biases, but because this surface is so hard, I'm not that worried about it. And you saw how tender I was. Okay, so let's do this one too. There's my bias. Whoa, get out of there. I don't want to press that. I want you to see how tender I'm being with this. As I mentioned the other day, I'm a pretty loosey-goosey uh, teacher, kind of, except when it comes to pressing. Okay, so here we go here. 
Oh look, it's when weirdo shapes don't line up again. So in this case, you're going to have this edge be exactly even and the weirdo shape is going to be down here. You know, I cleaned up my glue stick because I like to do a little glue stick here to hold it in place. All right, I'm going to put this right here, right here, and that's absolutely fan freaking tastic that that's like that. So let me go sew it again, and you'll understand why I'm having you press it counterintuitively in a moment here. You know, what's really great about these baskets is they really are easy to do. The big trick is the handle. That's it and biases. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Oh, that looks so good. Okay. There's my bias right there. I'm going to set it. Even when I'm setting it, I'm staying away from that. Actually, I'm not even on a pressing mat. I don't even know what I'm pressing on, but I'm coming up, coming off, Oh, look, how lovely. Just the way I like it. <laughs> the point happened to work. <laughs> I think I've shared with you that I don't care if points float, but I care if they're cut off. Oh my gosh, we make such stupid little rules for ourselves. Okay, now look, see, that's not good. That's hanging over. Mm -mm -mm. So let me get my little glue thing like this. I am so excited about Friday. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Now what you could do if you wanted is sew it from this side so you can see where the little um, stitches are so you don't cut them off. But I'm, I'm not that concerned about that. But you can, you know. I, I don't know why, but I like this smaller piece on top whenever possible. All these crazy rules, right? You guys are going to be happy about Friday, too. I'm throwing in other little odd things because, like, I got, well, I'll show you in a minute. I got a picture from somebody, and she was like, okay, now I've got another 32 to go. And I wrote her back 99 bottles of beer on a wall. <laughs> That's what this is. All right. Let's go here. Love it that this is floating a quarter inch. This is a little bit more than a quarter inch, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. And based on yester, uh, uh, Monday, I pre-checked what this end would be, what this would be, and the one I originally cut, cut for today was a no. Okay, so let, this is my original one. Let's pretend you can't see the no. See why I had you press out there? Because then this will exactly, when you go to sew it, will fit in. But the fact it's not fitting in tells me it's cut wrong. This is. And it was cut wrong. It was cut too small. So I went and re-cut it. And now it fits right in. So what you can do in this case is, again, you can go on this side and sew on here on the side with the X. But I'm going to tell you this is a little bit more than a quarter inch. I'm not going to care that it's floating. I'm just not going to care. All right. And maybe I'll just let that kind of come up. My guess is that did stretch a little bit. Look at that. It, even as careful as I've been, it's still stretched. Bias is a little booger, and that's why you never want it on the outside, ever. So let's do this. Put this here. I am going to use this as my guide, not this, because it has bowed. All right, a little bit of glue. But get why I had you press towards the white wings, right? Now you have a place to align to. 
And maybe, maybe these were cut a little big. I don't know, but I'll be right back. I'm gonna go right over here and just sew this. And let's just see what happens. You know, the great thing about fabric is that it's movable, unlike woodworking. The bad thing about fabric is that it's movable. <laughs> you know, and that's when you get yourself in trouble. Okay. So I'm gonna... Yay. Okay, this is a little short right here as, as this which makes me wonder if these were cut wrong, but it's okay, it's okay, it will work. So let's talk about that. Well, first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna get rid of this because when I press it, it will show through that white, right? So let me press it. And actually I'm glad that this is going a little bit awry, all right? Where did my little, where did my little, oh, I don't know where my little ruler went, but I'm good at this. I can tell you what's going on. This is, I can tell you right now, this is a quarter inch from here to here. It's not here. So what I would do as well as it's a quarter inch out here, not here. When I go to sew this to the other block, I will be pinning these together um down here and i will in my imagination pretend that i have extra fabric there that matches up to this i'm gonna be okay because there's enough there that it will catch but i won't go so 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 and then go down like that that's not what's going to happen i'm going to so 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 go through there and then just continue on pretending the fabric is there I mean, is this best practice? No, but I'm not going to throw this block away when there's enough in there to catch. That is not going to happen. Okay, let me see. If, um, yeah, I, yeah, Padma, um, I do want to show you when things screw up how I fix them because, again, fabric is movable and it's going to happen. We know that. Okay. Okay, Friday. Let me, oh, wait, wait, I got one more thing to show you here. Uh, Donna, this is the one with 99 bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> so she's got one, two, three, four, five, six, which means she has 32 more to go. <laughs> 30, I don't know. But I just love the blue. We've been looking at the uh, hot one, and this cool one is going to be equally as beautiful. In fact, one of you sent, uh, bought both the cool and the warm for, I think, her grandbabies. I, or her kids, I don't know, but they share a room and one loves the warm and love, one loves the cool and won't that just be a kaleidoscope of color when people walk in there? Yes, it will. So just start singing 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Okay, Friday. I'm sure if you don't know about cherry wood fabrics, just Google it when we get done here. They make the most delicious hand dyed fabrics on the face of the earth that have a different look to it. Uh, cherry wood has been around for 30 years or something like that. I was not aware of that. Carla is their owner and has been with the company for like 28 years. I'm not sure those are the right numbers, but we'll talk about it tomorrow. Anyways, we're talking about the next challenge, what the next cherry wood challenge is going to be. And also then I asked her for the past challenges just some images of some of and we didn't pick all the first place we didn't whatever but if you've ever been to a quilt show and seen these challenges they are crazy beautiful what people do and i think they're supposed to be 20 by 20. i can't remember we'll learn that on friday but i i i, I jumped to carla and she gladly accepted and we'll be discussing this next year's cherry wood which i'm yeah, and the past ones. And I got to tell you, this one I think I like the best so far. Okay, do we have any questions here, people? Any questions? I'm going to look up here. Okay. Let's see. I think, I think we are 
good. Okay, so how about that? I meet a neighbor and uh, they're moving away on Monday. <laughs> but they're not selling their house. I think they'll be back. I think they will be back. And uh, she will be in her Airstream when she's up here working. Okay, so yeah, Carla Overland from Cherrywood. And you know what? When you see her, I'm pretty sure you're going to recognize her. And she's also fixed herself up to match the challenge. Just wait. So have a great day, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you. Oh, I'm going to put out a plug for Wooden Gate Quilts Shop in Danville tomorrow at 5 o'clock Pacific time on Instagram Live. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I think they're going to have David Owen, David Hastings, David Owen Hastings, David Hastings Owen. Oh, I'll get back. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to, okay, John just has him. He's going to be on their Instagram live tomorrow, at five o'clock Pacific. I love his work. And we have a show with him coming up November, December. Do I square up the block? No. And I'll tell you why. Oh, thank you for asking that. Thank you. If I square it up, that means I'm going to take away this extra here. And now I've just really screwed up the size of the block. I would be taking off probably an eighth, about a quarter of an inch in total. No, I do not. I pretend that fabric is there. Oh, thank you for asking that. Thank you, thank you. Sarah, you're finding the handles to be really sharp, or is it hard? Sharp. Just follow the templates, uh, make sure you're working on bias, and there you go. Okay, I will see you guys Friday with Carla. Bye-bye. Oh, before I hang up, will there be a problem stitching them down? No, we'll talk about that Monday. Okay.